Today we're going to be tearing down the Suzuki G13 engine to see what's inside and how it works. Now the G13 engine is a four cylinder engine that was used in the Suzuki Swift and Geo Metro back in the 80s and early 90s. You see we've got a stamped steel valve cover at the top here, an aluminum head and an aluminum block. As you can see this engine's already been taken apart before so we're just going to go through it just to see some of the interesting design that they had back in the 80s on these Suzuki engines. Now starting at the front here you can see the timing side of the engine where the timing belt would run. We've got the single overhead cam shaft at the top here and the single crankshaft at the bottom there and those are going to be linked together through a timing belt driven water pump located in this area here. Now looking around the back of that engine you can see you've got that aluminum block and aluminum head. This here is where your distributor would plug into and then we're going to pop off this valve cover next. Taking a look under the valve cover you can see it's just a stamped steel design as opposed to being a cast piece of aluminum or steel. Here you can see we've got a baffle on the inside here and the oil filler cap. Pretty simple. Now taking a look under the valve cover, you can see this still uses the cork style valve cover gasket. Looking under here you can see we have a single overhead camshaft inside of here which is going to drive a roller rocker arm system which are going to push down on these valve springs over here. That makes this engine an eight valve engine where we have two valves per cylinder. But this side here being the exhaust side and the back side here being the intake side. So looking under the valve cover here, you can see we've got the roller rocker arms that sit on their own blocks over here that are bolted to the head. We have the camshaft that's down below, so in order to get that out, we're going to have to remove these Phillips screws. I hate using Phillips screws because sometimes they will strip out, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove all of those right now. These valves here use a manual adjustment where you can rotate this nut against the stud here in order to give you your valve adjustment. There's no hydraulic lifter here. I'm going to go ahead and remove the 12 millimeter nut. That'll take the pressure off of that. Alright, we're going to go ahead and remove all these rocker arm studs. Now I'm going to go ahead and top this rocker arm assembly out here. I can take off this rocker arm over here. Go ahead and tap this side out as well. Take out this assembly here. Right, I'm going to go ahead and slide this rocker assembly out here. This is what the rocker arms pivot against. And then I can take out these rocker arms here. And here's the other rocker shaft. We'll take out these two rocker arms here. The head bolts on these are actually a 14 millimeter hex. There's 10 of them going all the way around. So we're going to go ahead and zip those off. And the block comes away from the head. The head is of course attached to the stand, so we're going to go ahead and remove that next. Okay, I'm just going to release this from the engine stand here. And we'll take off this little head. So here you can see with the cylinder head removed, we've got the top of the block here. Everything's been cleaned up by the previous owners. You can see you've got the pistons that are going to move up and down here, and an open deck design that's casted in this aluminum block. Now taking a look at the bottom end of this little Suzuki engine, the oil pan was missing, so we're just going to jump straight to the bottom end here. You can see we've got the main bearings here, which is just a simple two-bolt design. There's no ladder frame or any extra bolts going into it. This engine didn't even make 100 horsepower back in the day. And here you've got our connecting rod bearings. So we're going to open this up so we can have a closer look. Now taking a look at these connecting rod bearings, you can see they do look a little bit worn out, although we don't have any history on this engine. We're going to turn the engine over and just remove these two more connecting rods. And we'll remove these connecting rod caps. And these connecting rod bearings also look a little bit scored up as well. Alright, we're going to go ahead and push these pistons down and take them out from the other side. Oh. Taking a look at this piston head here, you can see obviously it's very clean, but what I do notice is with these older engines is that the oil control ring has very wide gap between them, which means that you're not going to have as much carbon buildup between there, and your engine isn't going to burn too much oil compared to the newer engines where they're a lot tighter. So just as a fun comparison, here's the dinky little pistons out of this 1.3 liter four cylinder engine, and this one's out of a 3.5 V6. You can see obviously it's a lot bigger. Now you notice the difference in that oil control ring, how it's a lot smaller and there's a lot of carbon buildup compared to this one over here from the much older engine. Now this engine is very tiny. The largest fastener I found for the head bolts are actually a 14 millimeter. And the same goes for your main bearing bolts over here. These are a 14 millimeter. So next I'm going to go ahead and remove all the main bolts here that hold the crankshaft on. These are a 14 millimeter. Now I'm going to remove the crankshaft from the block here. 
Now taking a look at the engine lubrication system on this little engine here, you can see the oil pump is going to be mounted to the front of the engine driven off of the crankshaft. It's going to suck in oil from the oil pan area and then take it in through this main oil galley located over here on the face of the block. Now the oil pump is going to draw in that oil over here straight to the oil filter which is mounted directly to the block. The oil is going to get filtered out and then be sent down to the main oil galley that runs across the width of the block over here. Now the crankshaft and thus the connecting rods are going to get their oil through these holes over here which are going to tap into them directly over here so they can lubricate the crankshaft and connecting rods. In addition the main oil galley is also going to feed the head to this little galley going up to the head over here. Now there are no oil sprayers inside of the engine block here instead Suzuki's decided to tap off of the crankshaft here with this little hole which is going to spray oil up into the cylinder head to lubricate the piston moving up and down. Taking a look at the crankshaft itself you can see that things are a little bit worn out. There's a lot of lines and scores on here so this engine was well used. Similarly you can see there's a lot of scoring and lines on the main cap bearings. Now moving over to the cylinder head here, you can see this is the piece here that attaches the distributor. We're going to go ahead and remove these 10 millimeter bolts. Pop that off. So next I'm going to pop this camshaft out of the head here. And here you can see at the end of the camshaft, these are the two slots here that are going to drive the distributor because the ignition system on this was before ignition coils. You also notice that this camshaft only has two valves per cylinder, which you can see at the bottom here, as opposed to four cam profiles for four valves per cylinder. Taking a look under the cylinder head here, you can see that obviously things have been cleaned up. We've got a coolant jacket here that's going to surround all of these components here in coolant. Intake and exhaust ports are over here, as well as the spark plugs which would thread into here. Finally, taking a look at the top of the head here, you can see we've got our valve springs, as well as these pieces here that are going to hold the shafts for the rocker arm assemblies. You can see overall it's a very simplistic design. There's nothing like variable valve timing or anything extra on the cylinder head. Just a very simple overall design. And that's pretty much what's inside of the Suzuki G13 engine and how it works. And make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one.